Welcome back. This is the Part A tutorial of FastAPI in Python. In this last video, you'll learn how to raise exceptions in operations. So far, we mainly seen operations that are successful, but there could always be exceptions. It is critical to let the client of your API know when that happens, so that they can correct errors quickly. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Lian. Welcome to Just Into Data where data science and data engineer materials are shared and made simpler for you. Before writing code to handle exceptions, let's go to the docs of our API. This is a documentation of the API we built so far. We'll first use the get operation to look at the data in our database. So we have three users, Jack, Jill, and Jane. Now let's try some other operations to modify the database. For example, we'll look at the post operation here. We can send request body to create new users. Let's say username Jack and date joined 9999 January 1st, location nowhere, age 17. This returns a response code of 200 and a message saying we've successfully created user Jack. But as we've just seen, we already have a user Jack within our database. So we should now be allowed to use this post operation to create a new user named Jack. If we go to the get operation again to grab all the data, execute this, you can see that the post operation, which was supposed to create a user, updated information about user named Jack. So Jack is now with new date joined, location of nowhere, and age of 17. This was not supposed to happen. We should raise an exception to prevent this type of error. Let's go to PyCharm. Here is the post operation for creating users. After we grab the username, we can check whether such username is already in our database. So we can add if username in user db if this is true, we know that we should not allow the operation to continue to create such user. We can raise an HTTP exception. Raise? The raise statement can force a specific exception to occur. I won't go into details of Python exceptions. For our case here, we'll use the HTTP exception. The HTTP exception is a subclass of Python exception. It contains additional data that are related to APIs. It allows us to generate different response code with error messages to the client. We haven't imported this HTTP exception. So let's copy it and scroll all the way up. We can import it from FastAPI. Now let's go back down. So within the HTTP exception, we can specify the HTTP response status code and detail when this exception is raised. So far, we mainly seen status code of 200, which means the operation was a success. There are other codes. You can refer to this page for more details. But here is a summary. So for our case here, if the client entered a user that already exists, it is the client-side error. So by convention, we should use a code in the range of 400, We'll use the code of 409. You can put other code too, but it's good to follow convention. There are so many codes, it's hard to memorize them. There are shortcuts to remember the names. We can scroll up and from fast API at import status. The status module includes convenience variables for the HTTP status code. Let's try it out. If we go back to the 409 code we've set up, we can remove 409 and say status dot. So we know we want a code for HTTP conflict. As we are typing those words in, the auto completion function kicks in and reminds us it's 409. We can simply press enter to auto complete. So this variable, HTTP 409 conflict, is just for convenience. It holds the number of 409. But as you can see, it's easier for us to figure out which code to use. All right, then for the detail, 
we can put an F string to explain the error. Cannot create user, username, the placeholder of variable username, already exists. The rest of the code is the same. So to recap, when there is a POST operation with this pass, it will take the username from the request body. If such username is in our database already, the HTTP exception will be raised, and this operation will be terminated right away with a response code of 409, so the below code won't be executed. Otherwise, if the username is not in our database yet, it's the same as before, the user will be added to our database. Let's save this to reload the app and go to the docs. We'll go to the post operation to create users. It looks the same, but let's try it out. We'll do this username Jack, which already exists in the database. Let's also change location to a random string that's memorable, say exception raised. And just remove the H fields and execute. You can see a response code of 409 is returned. And here is the details we've set in the HTTP exception. Can now create user, username Jack already exists. This is nice. The client of the API will know what's going on, and their request to create a duplicate username won't work. Let's double check to make sure this request was terminated. Again, we'll do the get request to return the database. Execute. The username Jack still has location New York, not the new string that we've typed in, so that post request did not work. All right, besides the post operation to create duplicate users, there could be other errors. Let's refresh the doc to see all the operations. For this operations, update a specific user based on his name, get a specific user, delete a user, the client should only send requests for the username that exists in the database. For example, let's try this, the get operation for a specific user. What if I put Justin? I know there is no such username within the database, so if I execute this, it won't work. It returned a 500 code, saying it is an internal server error. But in reality, this is not a server error. This is because we, as clients, put in a username that doesn't exist, so it's a client error. We can go back to the code and raise the appropriate exceptions. Let's find the get operation with specific username. The function will still take an argument username, but we need to raise exception based on this username. We'll check if username not in user DB. So if the username entered by the client is not in our database, raise HTTP exception with status code. So let's use the status module from FastAPI again. Status dot say HTTP not found. There, it's giving us hint of this 404 code. We can press enter to autocomplete. So again, this variable holds the number of 404. It is only for convenience to find the code. We'll also put detail as an F string, username, the variable username, not font. This will help the client understand the error. Now, if we save this and go back to the documentation again, we've refreshed the page and use this get operation and try it out again. We'll put Justin again a username that doesn't exist in the database. Execute. Now we can see the 404 code with clear message saying username Justin not found. That's the reason the operation was terminated. Great. Let's go back to the code. As mentioned, the same exception should be raised for a few other operations. For example, for this delete operation, if there's no such username, we shouldn't delete it. And then for this put operation, if there's no such username, 
the operation should be terminated and no update should happen. Let's make the raise exception statements a function so we can reuse it. Let's go back to the get user operation, copy those few lines of code. We'll put it somewhere above. So we'll make it a function. We can add def ensure username in db with argument username declared as string. So this function can take in username and if the username is not in our database, it will raise HTTP exception with code 404 and details set here. Let's copy this function name. We can use it. If we go back to the get user operation, we can replace this code with a function with argument username. So again, the client enters a username. This username will go to this, this function and raise exception if it's not in the database. If it is in the database, this operation will work the same as before. We can also use it in other operations. We can copy this. Let's put it in the delete operation. So if the username is not in the database, the operation will be terminated and an exception will be raised. Otherwise, this will still delete such user from the database. Let's keep moving. We can also put it in the put operation here, as well as the patch operation here. And it's all good. Let's save this. I won't try it out in the documentation. Please feel free to test yourself. In this video, you've learned how to notify the client about their errors by raising HTTP exceptions. This helped the client understand and correct the errors quickly. That's all for the fast API in Python tutorial. You build a basic API where your clients can retrieve, create, update, and delete users' information in your database. Hope you're ready to explore more of FastAPI and build your own APIs. Did you learn something new in this video? If so, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button below this video right now. If you're interested in more data science tutorials and courses, please head over to our website justintodata.com. Thank you and see you in the next video.